Yeah, I've seen the Mrs. Puff theory. How Domino's 80s mascot incited a hostage situation. Didn't we see that? Jesus. Jesus Christ. How many times are you going to fucking hit the wrong key? Ah, pizza. I don't think we saw this. Truly actually. a wonderful food. The stuff dreams are made of and a favorite of many. An absolutely Russian timeless the classic. Of corn and celestial seaweed. Whether you're eating traditional wood-fired pizza straight from Mama's oven, or devouring the sausage-stuffed crust abomination of Pizza Hut, everyone loves a pizza. And when I think of pizza, I often think of Domino's. Now, Domino's First gets a bad rap that. a lot of the time, but if you ask me, eh, they're fine. They're not the greatest, but they're certainly not the worst either. Okay, Domino's okay, gets okay. a decent balance between the price and quality of their food. Not the best pizzas on the market, but good enough for their price. I, mean, I often find annoyed. myself ordering Domino's, so. and I just can't be bothered sorting dinner out. And as I sit there eating my pizza, I often think back on the story of Domino's Avoid the Noid marketing campaign. A campaign that ran through the mid to late 80s and early 90s, before meeting its fascinating and tragic end. You looked this up this the story, story on Soul Calibur Saturday some time ago. This is the greatest disaster ever, mm. and the sad fate of Kenneth Lamar Noid. It's 1960, and the failing pizza business Dominic's has just been bought out by two brothers, Tom and James Monaghan. For the whopping price of nine hundred dollar a day. What a deal! After struggling for a year with little success in their Holy new shit. business endeavor, James wanted out and sold his share to his brother Tom, who over the next few years would turn it into a burgeoning pizza empire. In 1965, the business changed its name to Domino's and began opening new shops all across the United States and eventually the world. Fast forward to the mid 1980s, and the brand is looking for a new way to market themselves. Considering the fast I remember food the pizza Noid space had his was already video occupied game. by a number of competing companies, they instead looked for a new way to make Domino <laughs> stand out from the crowd. A marketing campaign not based on some new gimmick pizza or lowered prices, Thanks, Lisa, Aaron. but instead one based on reliability. So, Domino's devised a new campaign, promising that their pizzas would arrive faster, hotter, and in perfect condition. In 1986, Domino's launched their brand new marketing campaign starring a strange looking buck toothed animated character known as Noid. The Noid. The Noid was a personification of all of the troubles that could occur with a pizza delivery. Whether it's getting the order wrong, having the pizza damaged or show up late, the Noid himself was hell bent on disrupting pizza deliveries through whatever nefarious means he could. Joshua? And only Domino's were able to avoid the Noid, as they put it. This marketing campaign worked. And Domino's saw great success with their new anti-mascot. The Noid quickly soared to the heights of other famous characters, starring in a number of advertisements and having toys Was he and comics actually made. Popular? Even two separate video games were created. I actually played one of the games. But the Noid had one crucial difference, you see. While most mascots are portrayed positively, as they are kind of the face of Thanks the company in many of fiddy, these commercials, fiddly. the Noid was the exact the opposite. Prime zombie monkey it was portrayed negatively. Fans. It was explicitly shown to be bad and he was hell-bent on destroying all pizza deliveries he could get his hands on. Only through the incredible power of Domino's could he be stopped. This choice to make the Noid a negative character, portrayed as a bumbling idiot to be avoided, was interesting. But it would ultimately be the cause of Domino's greatest PR disaster ever. Born in 1967, Kenneth Lamar Noid was not a mentally healthy individual. He too saw the marketing campaign of Domino's and their slogan to avoid the Noid. And Kenneth became increasingly convinced that the marketing campaign was directly targeted at him. Kenneth was a paranoid schizophrenic. Oh, and he believed for oh, whatever reason that Domino's was attempting to smear his name. Oh my fucking him. god, I remember this. After years of seeing these ads, toys, comics, Games and more becoming increasingly popular yep, around now him. I remember this. Kenneth reached a breaking point. January 30th, 1989, midday. 
Kenneth walks into his local Domino's Pizza in Georgia and produces a 357 Magnum revolver. He points his gun at the two employees behind the counter and demands to speak to the owner of Domino's corporate. Tom Isn't Ron Zeiler in the resub fries? He believed Tom Sonia. himself was responsible for this marketing campaign that was targeting him. And that Tom had even been sneaking around his apartment, spying on him and going through his things. Ugh. While it seems like he did Maybe get he to make was. a phone call to Domino's corporate, I can't find any evidence that he actually got to speak to Tom. At this point though, Kenneth had two hostages inside the restaurant with him, both employees of the store. And when police surrounded the establishment, Kenneth made two demands. First, he wanted $100,000 in cash. And second, he wanted a white limousine to drive away in. For the next six hours, the siege continued, with Kenneth occasionally speaking to police over the phone, at one point, offering to release one of his hostages in exchange for a copy of the book, The Widow's Son, a book about Freemasons, because apparently Kenneth was some sort of proto-Alex Jones type guy. As the siege continued though, Kenneth eventually became hungry after waiting inside the restaurant for so long, and demanded that his two hostages make him some pizzas to eat. The hostages complied because, of course, they fucking did. He had a gun and made him probably the life. best pizza they've ever made in their life. While he was eating, however, he was distracted, and with his gun in his lap, his hostages saw an opportunity to escape, and they took it, successfully running out the door and getting away from the restaurant. Kenneth soon afterwards realized the hopelessness of his situation and surrendered to the authorities. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Kenneth was taken into custody. He was charged with kidnapping, aggravated assault, extortion, and possession of a firearm during a crime. While he was eventually found not guilty due to insanity on all charges, he was consigned to a mental institution for several months. During this time, the media picked up on the story and ran wild with it. Domino's should have really Domino's like doubled down on Noid. The Noid this time was just too good to pass up. This PR disaster should have caused Domino's to cease all usage of the Noid immediately, right? Well, not really. While the Noid was certainly seen less of immediately following the incident, his second video game, Yo Noid, yeah. was released for the NES in 1990, just one year later, and more merchandise, ads, and more continued to be produced. The Noid, it seems, was just too good to kill off quite yet. Things take a darker turn in 1995, however, when Kenneth Lamar Noid took his own life. Whether this was the result of him still believing Domino's was targeting him with their Noid marketing campaign or not, hey, nobody truly space. knows. But it can certainly be said that Domino's continuing to run Noid ads and produce more merchandise with the character certainly didn't help. This time, Domino's decided to stop production of anything relating to the Noid. He would no longer appear in advertisements or have merchandise featuring him produced. Until 2009, when Domino's began hey, to he's the back to back for various promotions. Stay classy, Domino's. And as I'm editing, well, what are the odds that there's Domino's another to bring the Noid, Noid back. in the world that he's that's going to be appearing in the new unwell. Crash Bandicoot mobile game, apparently, along with a brand new series of TV commercials? Because you know, someone killing themselves over your mascot just isn't enough, right? And so concludes the interesting, bizarre, and ultimately tragic story of the Noid. The character still has a cult following to this day, with a fan-made sequel to his video game Yo Noid being released in 2017. Yo Noid 2 Enter the Void. I forgot all about this A surprisingly story. great game produced as part of the new Jam City 2017 Game Jam. I'll play Nick all While fans I don't know if should still enjoy the character in spite of the tragedy More surrounding I see it, it, the less cool Whether it you think Domino should still be using it or not is up for debate. Thanks for watching my shitty video. If you enjoyed it, consider checking out my previous video talking about... It wasn't a shitty video. And the situation, I think, is very interesting. I don't see anything wrong with Domino's continuing to use the Noid. I think the odds of there being another person in the world named Noid that also goes on to rob and hold people hostage is super low. I think they rolled the dice again. I say let it ride. Yeah, super unlucky. I do remember when we learned about this during Soul Calibur Night because someone made a annoyed costume and then chat told me that the Noid was responsible for a hostage situation and I didn't believe them. Turns out they were absolutely right. Thanks to the Prime Belly Bopper and the Resub Toto and K Manus. That is such Domino's luck though. Like, I'm sure there's someone in the world named after every mascot. Like, there's got to be a Tony the Tiger somewhere. Like a Tony Tiger in the world. And you don't hear anything about that fucking guy.
But the one time Domino's finds success in a marketing mascot, it turns out to be a guy who's very mentally unwell, who holds a place hostage, thinking that they're mocking him, and then goes on to kill himself. Like, that's just remarkably unlucky. And such a weird name, too. Thanks the resub Rex and Isaac. Negative mascot? You could argue that the Trix Rabbit and the Leprechaun for the Lucky Charms are negative mascots. They are constantly getting shit on by kids. So let's say I was named Trix Rabbit and I saw that commercial. I'd be like, man, they fucking hate me.